Jealousy is admiration plus comparison. Think about it. That martial artist you're jealous of, you admire them and you're impressed by them. That's the core of it. That jealousy only comes into play when we start comparing ourselves to them. They seem so much better than us and we don't measure up and now we're jealous. But without that comparison, it's simply admiration. Last year, I made a video on the first step to conquering jealousy, and today I'm gonna dive into the second. But first, a recap. When I'm feeling jealous, what I do is I focus on the thing that made me jealous rather than the feelings of jealousy themselves, and I compliment that other person on it. So if they're really good at sparring and they kicked my ass, I compliment them on their efforts. If their kata is awesome, I tell them so. I take myself out of the equation and I focus on them and my admiration for them. And in doing so, I take all of that power out of jealousy and I transform my relationship with that other person. And then here's the next step in this process. I learn whatever I can from them so that I can be awesome too. And I'm gonna give you an example here that isn't really about martial arts, but it does illustrate how you can take that knee-jerk jealousy and use it to your advantage. So years ago, I was studying dietetics at the University of British Columbia in Vancouver. I was in the program with a girl, she was 19, and she was awesome. And at first I felt really jealous of her because she had it all together and I had no idea how she did it. She would get straight A's in school, you know, full course load, she had a job, she had a social life, she would take time off every week, she was super fit and she'd exercise two to three hours a day without fail. She was super happy, awesome, motivated, confident, healthy, focused. And it blew me away, 19 years old, and she had it all together. And here was I, you know, 26, a homeowner, I was traveling, I don't know, three hours a day by bus to get to campus. I had this house and responsibilities. I had a job, you know, I had a casual position working at a hospital. I worked really hard in university so that I could get scholarships and bursaries, you know, so that I didn't have to pay for school. So I had to keep my grades up to maintain those. So I would always get good grades. I'd get A's and, you know, the occasional B, but I had to, I felt like I had to bust my ass to do that. And I had to sacrifice a balanced life in order to do that. So I'd be exhausted all the time. I wouldn't have a social life. You know, I'd be studying really late and cramming on the weekends and just I always felt so busy as a student and unbalanced like I had to sacrifice certain things in order to be successful as a student and then here was this 19 year old who was doing the exact opposite of that and was achieving far more success with seemingly far less effort and it blew me away so of course jealous right I compare myself think I feel like crap I'm burning out my life is so unbalanced and here she is, happy, you know, focused, super efficient, productive, like how the heck does she do it? At first, I kind of wallowed in that jealousy and then there was an experience that totally changed my perspective on this. We had had a midterm exam for, I think it was a biochemistry class or something and none of us had got a perfect score. It was a tough exam and after the class, there was, you know, bulletin boards at the back of the class and the professor had posted all the answers to the midterm exam. And so everyone's out there, you know, crowded in front of these bulletin boards with their clipboards, writing down all the answers to the questions they'd gotten wrong, right? And then this girl, she comes over to, to me and then she stopped and she looked at me and she said, wait a minute, is the final exam cumulative? So like, is this information gonna be on the final? And I thought, uh, no, actually it's not. And she said, oh, well, why are we doing this then? We don't need this for the final. She said, huh. Ah priorities she put her book away and took off and I stood there mouth open you know staring after her looking at this crowd of people who are all stressed out you know overwhelmed by all their classes already panicking about the final exam writing down answers to questions that they would never need for another test ever and she just saw that this wasn't a priority and walked off to focus on something that was a priority whatever it was and it blew my mind. And instantly that jealousy turned to, holy crap, I'm impressed by her. She's got her shit figured out. At 19 years old, she's got her shit figured out. And I want in, I want some of that, right? So what I started to do is I would talk to her about stuff and see like what she actually does in her life and how does she manage all this and juggle all this. And I would start studying her, not in a creepy way, but you know, I'd, I'd observe her behavior in class and outside of class and how is she doing this and I learned so much 
by watching her. I made a decision to stop focusing on me, to stop comparing myself to her. And instead I thought, I want to learn from her so that I can get better at this. She's got balance in her life. I want that too. So I'm going to look to her as a source of inspiration. And it totally helped. I decided not to get caught up in, you know, focusing on her results, like the straight A's, the super fit body, whatever. And instead I broke it down into the skills she needed to develop to get those results. And I started working on those skills myself. How could I build those skills myself? So time management was key. Doing the thing properly at the time rather than putting it off till later. She never procrastinated ever. Um, focusing on the most important thing and letting everything else go. So writing down answers to a midterm when we never needed that information again, that was not important. But other things were, right? She also never sacrificed the important stuff. So she didn't give up exercise to study more. She didn't give up sleep to study. She didn't give up her social life to study. She was so efficient when she actually studied that she had time for everything that was important to her. And that was, that was amazing. But I mean, this was someone who was an athlete, like she'd been a competitive athlete for years. And I'm sure, you know, learned all these skills from her parents, you know, good for them. So she learned how to manage her time. And she knew that rest and recovery and fitness and health and nutrition were all so important to her performance. So she had all of these goals and aspirations regarding, you know, career and education and all that. But not once did she sacrifice her health and well-being for, for any of those goals. Not once. You know, and if she was sick, she would take time off, right? She would rest. Like she wouldn't, you know, work out as hard. She would get more sleep, that kind of thing. But she knew that rest and recovery were key. And that was a huge part of it, right? So she had this incredibly balanced life at 19 years old. And it blew my mind. So anyway, I, I really benefited from this process by setting aside my jealousy and seeing her as a source of inspiration and realizing I can learn from this person. I can develop the same skills. And even if my outcome is different than hers, I will improve regardless. So if you're constantly sparring with someone who always kicks your ass and you feel kind of shitty about it, you know, instead of that, first of all, you can do the thing that I mentioned in the beginning where you compliment them, say, wow, like you're really good at sparring. Good for you. And then you can talk to them say, well, what is your training like? Like how, like, how did you get so good? Like, I'm really impressed by you. You know, martial artists love to talk about their training, right? We all love to talk about martial arts. And I'm sure that person would love to share it with you. You know, if you're, if you're not being competitive, like if you go up to someone who you're initially jealous of and say, wow, like you're really good. Like, what's your secret? Well, they're probably not going to want to share with you because they can tell you're jealous and angry and competitive. But if you're honestly admiring, like, wow, like you impress me. How do you do it? I'm sure they'd be more than happy to share. And then you can learn from them, right? You can learn what they're doing. What's their routine like? What's their training like? What's their mindset like? What kind of mental game stuff do they engage in? And you can learn those same skills and you can get stronger as a martial artist as a result. And that was another thing that was really cool about her is that she was humble enough that she was willing to get feedback and advice and tips and information from other people. There was no ego there, no pride getting in the way of her learning from others. So even though she had all the success in, you know, athletic pursuits, like in gymnastics and whatnot, and she was, you know, straight A student, she had no problem asking other people for advice in things that she was not super skilled at. No pride, no ego just this willingness to absorb information that was helpful to her. And then she'd filter it and use what she, what she needed to improve. So we can all do this. You know, we, we can all practice this skill and it is a skill. It does take practice of humbling ourselves, taking ourselves out of the equation. If we feel jealous, okay, we're comparing ourselves. How about if we step back and say, well, I want what they have. And yeah, I feel jealous, but that means that I admire them. So I'm going to just stop focusing on my feelings of jealousy and instead look at them as a source of inspiration. What can I learn from them? How can I use what they're doing to help myself?